at the threshold of history. Here we stand at the beginning of the future. And we're praying, O oh Lord, this very day, you open the windows of heaven. And you shower your blessings upon us in Jesus' name. Touch every light today. Draw the people to yourself. Light bridge, deliver, set everyone free. We give you the glory for each because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You can be seated. And you know, sometimes I heard somebody complaining and he's saying, I don't like where I am. I don't like what is happening to me. I don't like where I stand. And I do not like all the experiences I have. While that individual was standing there, mourning, grumbling, complaining, criticizing everybody around, saying, you all contributed to my predicament. Then somebody came to him and he said, why don't you look in the right direction? Because I come to tell you tonight, it is not where you are today that matters. It is the direction you are facing and the direction you are looking. And tonight, I'm bringing a scripture to you. It's in Isaiah chapter 45. It's in verse 22. It says, Look unto me, all ye the ends of the earth, and be ye saved, for I am God, and there is none else. Look. Look. The direction in which you are looking. You see, there are people, all their lives, they look down. Other people, all their lives, they're looking back. Other people, all their lives, they're busy looking around them. Other people simply look inward. And others look forward, outward, into the future. And I find a few people wise people intelligent people looking up the question is why you look down and you'll be defeated if you go through life looking down like this looking down like this you never look up and you never look any other direction always looking down when you look down you are downcast and you are defeated i find other people they made a lot of mistakes in the past and they have been they have experienced a lot of failure in the past and every time their mind has been attracted backwards and they're looking back you look down you are defeated you look back you are depressed because every time you remember the failure of the past every time you remember all the heart aches of the past Every time you remember all the disappointments of the past and you're looking back, you're going to be depressed. Other people are looking around. Can somebody help me there? Can somebody lift me up there? Can somebody give me a helping hand there? And they're all the time looking around. And I'm here to tell you that many people are so filled with their own problems. They're not thinking about you. And they are so involved, overwhelmed by their own problems. They cannot think about you. Therefore, if you're all the time looking around, looking around, you'll be disappointed. Disappointed. Other people, they feel all right. Since looking down will not help me. Looking back will not deliver me. Looking around, I cannot get a helping hand. I will look inward. You know, when you look inward like that, then you're filled with your own thoughts. And then all the history of grandfather, grandmother, and yourself, and all the self-talk you used to have when you concentrate on yourself will come back. 
I don't think I can do well. I don't think I can make it. I don't think there's any future for me. Therefore, if you look inward, all you have, you'll be dejected. How about those who look into the future? In fact, there's some people that are, they feel their time with looking for soothsayers. They're looking for a prophet somewhere that will tell us what will happen tomorrow, what will happen next week. And they're very, very busy every time. They're looking forward, they're looking forward, they're looking to the future. And they're looking to the stargazers. And they want all these soothsayers, the horoscope, and the fortune tellers will tell them what happens in the future. If you look too much forward, you are going to be dismayed. You'll be confused. Because this prophet will tell you this. That other social will tell you another. And then the stargazer will tell you another. And the other fellow, the progressionator, they call them. They'll tell you another. And you'll be dismayed and confused. The only direction to look. And that's why you are here tonight. If there's going to be a change in your life, a transformation in your life, if there's going to be what we call miracle in your life, tonight I call upon you, stop looking down. Stop looking back. Stop looking around. There's no help around. And stop looking inward. And stop looking into the future. Look up today, and if you look up, you will be delivered. Give me a good amen. amen. And so God said, look unto me. Where is he? He's up. And he says, look up unto me, and be ye saved. All the ends of the earth, for I am God, and there is none else that's what that says and be saved actually that same word is translated and be healed and be delivered and be held and be taken out of where you are now to where you dream you want to be look up then unto the lord and be saved and be healed and be delivered and be set free and be liberated god will liberate you and it says the message is not coming to a lonely individual or a sectional group of people it says all the ends of the earth and he said because i am god doesn't that interest you many people will tell you what they were which they are not today they will tell you what they hope to be, which they are not today. But it says, I am God. The one that was, is the one that is, is the one that will ever be. And then it says, there is none else. Nobody can help you like God. Nobody can save you like God. Nobody can deliver you like God. As I look at this, where God calls you, and he calls him and he calls her and he calls everyone and he says look up unto me and then begin to find out was there another time that the people found themselves in a problem they couldn't solve by any human scientific traditional ingenuity or whatever was there any time that people had and insurmountable problem a terrible problem that really was to destroy them and then the lord said look up and as a result of the looking up they were delivered yes i'm going to read a story to you that story if you have a bible in your hand is in numbers chapter 21 numbers chapter 21 and i'm reading to you there from verse 4 the topic of the message tonight is double miracle through the look of faith. Double miracle. Or if you need more than two, triple miracle. Or if you need more than, more than three, then you have manifold, multiplied miracles, whichever you want. 
Your choice is yours tonight. Because tonight, the Lord will visit you. And you will take the blessing of God back home in Jesus' name. I said you'll take the blessing of God back in Jesus' name. Now, in Numbers chapter 21, I'm reading from verse 4. Please pay attention. I'll read the story to you. It says, And they journeyed from Mount Or by the way of the Red Sea, and to come past the land of Edom. And the soul of the people was much discouraged because of the way. Oh, you say you are reading a story to us of something that happened to all the people. Yes, don't you understand? The glass of water you have is the same water you have in the mighty ocean. And no matter where you go, that same water you are going to find everywhere. What happened to A is happening to B. What happens to C is happening to D. And what happened to other people, the same thing is happening to you. And you'll see it very clearly now. It says they were in a journey. Life is a journey. From being a baby, to being a toddler, to being an infant, to being a child, to being an adolescent, to being a man, and to being an aged fellow until he goes to the grave. It's a journey. And many, many things happen on that journey. And it doesn't matter at what milestone of the journey you may be at now. Many, many things have happened already. And many things are still happening today. And it says, because of the way. Because of the way. The way that the people were taken. The way that they were being led. It says, the soul of the people was much discouraged. And if I were to come to you one by one, and ask you, have you ever been discouraged in your life? Or you say, if I had time, I will tell you how many times I've been discouraged. You know, when you were very young, discouragement came. And you thought, when I finish schooling, there will be no problem not to bring discouragement anymore. And then you finish school. And lo and behold, with a certificate in your hand, discouragement still came. When I get a job, there will be no discouragement or any kind of emotional problem anymore lo and behold you got a job and what can i tell you you can tell me more that discouragement still came okay when my salary is upgraded and i have more there'll be no discouragement anymore and then there is your salary and discouragement still came when i get married there'll be no discouragement anymore and then you got married what are we finding again discouragement i think it's because i don't have any child yet when i have children there will be no discouragement anymore. And then you are children. Discouragement came again. I think it's because my work and my services are not being recognized. When I'm giving recognition, there will be no discouragement anymore. And again, after the recognition, discouragement came. It's a matter. It's a fact of life. Discouragement wherever you are. Discouragement whoever you are. And the Lord is telling you today, He knows what you are going through, whatever it is in your life. You are young, you are old, you are employed, you are unemployed, you are recognized or you are despised, whatever is bringing that discouragement in your life, the Lord will solve that problem today. I said the Lord will solve that problem today. Now it says in verse 5, And the people speak against God, and against Moses. You can identify with that. In our lives, how many times have we spoken against God? And we have said, God, why did you create me like this? Some even ask God, why am I a Nigerian? Why am I in this country? Other people ask, why am I a black man? And they shoot all their blame. All their problems on God. God, you are at fault. This, you created me like this. You put me in such a position like this. And it is you, you are to blame for all my problems. Many people speak against God. In fact, there are some people are speaking God to the point that they don't even want to go to church. 
They don't want to touch the Bible. They don't want to relate with any of the commandments of God. They say, no, forget about it. I don't, have, I don't want anything to do with Bible, with God, with Christ, with church, or anything religious. Because of the discouragement in your life. And that's exactly what all the people, the people I'm reading about to you, that's exactly what they did. And it says, they spoke against God. And they also spoke against Moses. What the word of God is telling us is, you sin against God, number one. You sin against man, number two. In fact, as you look at all the commandments of God, do you realize those commandments of God are divided into two? Numbers one, two, three, four. They are commandments relating to God. And when you serve an idol, you offend God. When you take the name of God in vain, you're offending God. And when you are making, molding, creating an idol to worship, you're offending God. And when you do not honor, respect the Lord and the Lord's day, you're offending God. And then numbers 5 to 10, relating to man. Your parents first, that you will honor your father and your mother. And how many people over here, everybody here, how many have offended man and offended your parents? And then the fact that you will not steal, you will not commit adultery, you will not be covetous, and you will not be a false witness. That's commandment concerning man. And like these people in their journey of life, and it says we have they spoke against God. And he spoke 